Hi, I'm Peter Capaldi. I play The Doctor, and you're watching EMS Productions. Hi everyone, welcome along to today's video where I thought I'd just give you a few of my thoughts on Series 10 with... because we have little bits of news and the odd thing, and I thought just generally some of my thoughts on that and anything that I want to see in Series 10. Naturally there will be a few minor spoilers, I mean I haven't delved into loads of spoilery stuff this year I must admit, so it won't be full of spoilers, but if you want to know like nothing about Series 10 slash Christmas Special, then you probably don't want to watch this video. So yeah, just a few kind of random things, not really in any order, this is a fairly, going to be a fairly almost like a vlog style video really, rather than more of a fixed discussion video where I'm very much just picking up on random things relating to Series 10 and kind of thinking about if that's a good thing or not. So firstly, I mean, it was kind of confirmed, spoiler alert, a few days ago that Nardole is in the Christmas special, which I know loads of people are very happy about. But, which, so I, I'm, I'm not sure where I'm at with the, um, with Nardole as character, because he's, I think I said, have I said it before? I probably said it somewhere. I'm sure I said it, actually no, maybe I didn't actually say this before about my opinions on Nardole in general, I mean. I think that he was a good one-off character, but I find it hard to see why they brought him back. I'm not as negative as some people who literally kind of say, I won't watch the show because he's in it, kind of thing. This is the most terrible thing Moffat's ever done. Well, it blatantly is, and I mean, I'm sure Moffat's done a lot worse things than that. But, I won't go into that. So, I think it's not an obvious choice, certainly, to bring him back as a character generally. I mean, obviously we knew he was in Series 10, but now it is... He's going to be in the Christmas special as well. I don't know. I, despite what various articles are saying, when they say the Christmas special guest is confirmed as as Nardole slash Matt Lucas, I'm not sure whether that is official or whether he's just one of the characters in the Christmas special. Because, but who knows for sure? Because we really don't know anything at the moment. I mean, they're only just filming the Christmas special, so we know basically nothing about it at the moment. But yeah, Nardole. I feel like you need to give him a chance. I know he's not of very obvious choice and not necessarily is going to be very good, but I mean, I quite liked him in um, Husband River Song, I didn't think he was like the most amazing character ever, but I didn't think he was sort of offensive, offending me like some people seem to act. So I, th I think you kind of just got to give him a chance, because obviously when you were in a more full role as a kind of, probably he's going to be a minor companion or something, we don't quite know, but I feel like then he's going to grow into the role a bit more and be given some more interesting material as well to work with. Because I do like Matt Lucas as an actor, I must admit, I really like all his Little Britain and all the comedy stuff he does, I really like that. So, naturally, I'm kind of slightly more positive towards Nardole than I guess other people. So, I think just give him a chance. But yeah, I think he's going to be in the Christmas special, which I'm okay with. I'm sure some people will moan. But that's Doctor Who fans for you. Other recent news coming out of um, Peter Capaldi's mouth, in fact, was uh, last week he was asked by a fan on, on filming when's the series starting, and he said April, which... It's pretty good. I mean, the kind of looking probable date now is the 15th of April or Easter, Easter weekend, the Saturday on April 15th on Easter weekend, which back in the RTD days, it was that every year pretty much. So it makes sense and it fits in with Capaldi saying April. Yeah, so I think if you want to pencil in a date that's probably going to be the start of Series 10, I'd put the 15th of April in there. So I've, I've kind of taken a slightly kind of different attitude to um, spoilers and everything this year, whereas last year, Series 9, I kind of, as soon as filming started in January, I was kind of going on Gallifrey base on the digital spy forums, looking around everywhere the internet I could to find spoilers and stuff. And to some degree, it probably did spoil the series for me a little bit. I mean, I was, I knew Gallifrey was coming back. I know that was fairly obvious anyway, but... I knew it for certain because a picture had leaked from Clara and the Doctor inside the um, cloisters from the end of Syria from Hellbent. Um, that image had leaked in about April or May, I think. So good job, um, BBC. And and there was a head of an ood as well and various other monsters, so we could kind of see they were coming back as well. So there were just lots of little spoilery things coming in. Obviously, there was the stuff with Face the Raven and we kind of all knew Clara was dying, so that was a spoiler anyway, but... 90% of people knew that anyway when Peter Capaldi goes on Graham Norse on the day before and confirms it's going to happen. Great, great um, marketing and promotion and everything there, telling us that Karen Pine is going to die. I mean, maybe you'll get your viewing figures up when you were a bit desperate, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I've, I've kind of steered clear of all these spoilers this year because I thought I want to kind of do this slightly differently to last year and kind of go in a bit more fresh into the series. So, and I, and I, it hasn't kind of like felt like I'm desperate to go and find spoilers out and stuff, whereas last year I'd always kind of want to go and suddenly find out everything I can about every episode and stuff, whereas this year 
I'm just not really being bothered at all. Which doesn't mean I have lack of interest in the show or anything like that. I just kind of want to be slightly more fresh going in, I think. Something a bit, a bit different. So that's why I have a lot less kind of spoilery knowledge to impart to you. Um, other than the odd filming picture which we see, which shows Peter and um, Pearl in some sort of Victorian costume from series episode 3 or something. Um, the guy who used to play Poirot, he's in episode 4, I think. Um, they've done some filming in Valencia in Spain, which looks like some sort of futurist. It, actually, there's a shot, I'll try and put it up, which kind of reminded me of The Girl Who Waited. Let me know if you think that. And actually, I've only seen like several filming pictures, but all of them for some reason just remind me of images from series 6. There's like the doctor in the, um, Peter in the, in the crop fields, which looks like the one from Let's Go Hitler in series 6. There's this shot from The Girl Who Waited, and I'm sure there was something else as well. I can't remember which one now. If I find it, I'll put it up now. So there you go. Um, but yeah, for some, I, it's pure, probably just pure coincidence, but it does just feel like some of these film pictures kind of remind me of Series 6 quite a lot. Which I have no problem with because I like Series 6. That's a video for the future. So yeah, just a couple of other things I have picked up on because occasionally I do see spoilers on Twitter. I mean, I block some of the biggest spoiler accounts like Girly Letters. Check them out if you want to block them and hate spoilers. Um, so I've, I've blocked them, but I occasionally do just from people I follow and stuff, see the old filming picture and stuff. So it looks like... The opening episode has something to do with shadows and stuff, I don't really know the details. Don't tell me the details, because I don't want to know. But something about shadows. Um, and what was the other what was the other bit? I can't even remember. Um, oh yeah, there's something around Bill's house as well, like she has she lives in some flat with six people or something like that. Maybe that's complete nonsense. But I have a feeling someone said something like that. But yeah, don't... Please don't go and post a million spoilers in the comments if you know stuff, because I don't want to know and I will just remove your comment if you do post it, because I don't want to know, and I don't want to sort of be letting everybody else know all these spoilers. Yes, if you want to find it, you can go and find it in the depths of the Gallifrey Base Forum, or the depths of Twitter on DWSR or something like that, but kind of on a just a more general kind of Series 10 Thoughts video, I don't really want a load of spoilers in the comments, so I don't want to read them, so please don't post them, but if you do post them, I'll remove them instantly, so don't bother. You can, you can kind of post a comment relating to something that I have said already that's just minor spoilers, but anything that's a significant spoiler, like, oh, um, the Daleks are in the finale, or Gallifrey's going to be back in the first episode, or these kind of things. They're, I'm not saying that they're obviously not true, just, I just made this up, don't worry, I have just made this up. But, don't tell me, because I don't want to know. We're looking more positive for Peter Capaldi staying for Series 11, so that's all good. I mean, Moffat said I'm probably not writing his finale episode, so that sounds good. Peter's, it's his decision. So I'm feeling optimistic. Still, obviously, a little bit worried, like, is Peter now filming his last series? How depressing does that sound when he feels like he's been the Doctor for no time? But I'm, I'm, I'm feeling more confident that Peter's going to be staying around, which, as far as I'm concerned, is fantastic news. Some of this news is kind of slightly older stuff from earlier in, fair amount earlier in the year, but just things I haven't really commented on before. And I, the news, I think, Stephen let us know that it's going to be mostly one-part stories for Series 10, which I was slightly disappointed about. I was kind of... I loved the um, two parts with cliffhangers and everything element of Series 9. And so I was hoping that they... It feels like, at the moment, Moffat just likes to go from one extreme to the other because um, he went from Series 7 with zero two-parters, Series 8 with pretty much no two-parters, then suddenly Series 9, all two-parters, and then Series 10 there's going to be virtually no two-parters again. It seems he can't just strike the nice balance that we had for the first five series, where you had three two-parters, the finale's two-parter, plus two other two-part two stories, and then five or six, however many it makes up, seven, seven one-part stories, or six nowadays it would be one-part stories standalone stories, whatever you want to call them. And I feel like that works better just than just having 10 standalone stories and then a couple of part finale. Well, do not do a single part finale, that's a terrible idea. It's, it doesn't work, so I hope he doesn't do that. But um, So yeah, that was slightly disappointing because I love the cliffhanger element and everything, but hopefully if, if we're going to get less sort of actually properly linked stories, then maybe we'll get more of a proper story arc, which would be quite nice. I mean... I, I love a good story arc, Series 5, Series 6. I know it's, it gets a bit complicated in Series 6, but certainly Series 5, that's kind of the template, I think, of how to make a story arc for a series of Doctor Who. And the last couple have just kind of been lacking, well, actually, the last three. I mean, Series 7, The Impossible Girl was a bit meh. Then Series 8, Missy, was pretty terrible. It was... I'm, I'm actually going to do it. Actually, I won't go any further than this, because I am going to, in the future, someone, hopefully this year, do a series on each of the story arcs of the different series, kind of looking at what worked and what didn't and seeing how good actually they overall are as a story arc because I, I really that's always an idea in any show that I love sort of obviously Doctor Who used to work in standalone kind of formats 
you link the episodes and that was fairly standalone. But I always love shows where there's sort of plots that link together, building up through the series into the finale, sort of these big things happening towards the end all pulling together. And I love it when they do that kind of thing and that's and that's something I really like in Doctor Who as well. And I think can work really well if they do it right, but they haven't so much recently. So that's why I thought I'll do a series on it. So coming soon to EMS Productions is Doctor Who the Story Arcs or something. Probably a better name than that, but who knows. So hopefully you'll look forward to that. Now yes, this is this is kind of just a rambly video of me mm, randomly saying thoughts and stuff, but that's why I called it Series 10 A Few Thoughts, because it is just some random ramblings. I mean, what a couple of things that I'd like to see in Series 10, well, we know we're having Missy back, so that's good, but I'd like her to have a proper sort of... a Missy story rather than her being shooed in with the Cybermen and the Daleks the last couple of appearances. Let's give her a proper Missy story or something, something on Gallifrey. How about that? So Missy's ended up on Gallifrey and something's going on there. That I think I'd love... Well, well, Gallifrey has to come back. I think, personally, I think that it'll be... I think Gallifrey will be involved in Moffat's kind of final few episodes. I, I have a feeling that Moffat's final episode is going to be Christmas next year. And I just have a feeling that he's going to do the boring route of a husband's... Because obviously he said before Husband of a Song that that was going to be a... That, that could have been his last episode. So that kind of gives you an insight in potentially how he's going to write a last episode as some kind of poor comedy romp really and so I although he kind of and along with the stuff where he said about oh no one cares about me as the showrunner they're only just focusing the actors when blatantly we are just you're just talking yourself down off that we all care even if it's negatively we care about you and your writing and stuff so don't say that but it kind of made it sound like he doesn't want to go down the Russell route of this whole big grand finale with farewell to all the characters and stuff I love the end of time I'm gonna review that soon and you're gonna love it because it is a great story but I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for that video, but I'll do it anyway. So, but he's more, he's, he feels like Moffat isn't going to do that sort of story, which I'm obviously disappointed about because I love the end of time and how it does that kind of thing. So I just sense that the 2017 Christmas special, Moffat's final episode, will be a, unless it's, unless it's Capaldi's regeneration, it will be fairly low key. I just have a feeling. But who knows for sure. I do sense that Gallifrey will appear at the end of series 10 because why wouldn't you when you've got it back? Why would you not bring it back? So... I don't know really, but I really hope it does. And I'm just, I, it's an I was just thinking an interesting point about the Daleks and the Sidemen and stuff. What do you guys think? Should there be a Dalek story? Should there be a Sideman story in series 10? Should they be involved in the finale or what? Because I'm not quite sure. I think maybe the Daleks should have a rest at the end of this year. I can't see it happening because of Moffat and finales and everything. But in an ideal world, I feel like maybe the Daleks should have a rest and then come back. Yeah, keep him out of this series, keep him out of the end of Moffat and everything, and then bring him back in shocking fashion with the with Chris Chibnall's sort of series finale, maybe Capaldi's leaving story, exit story or something, and bring him back sort of secretly in that episode where they almost did it in 05, back, throw back to series one, where no one knew that the Daleks were going to appear in the finale of the last two episodes until they stick it in the next time trailer on Boomtown. BBC, for 10 years, spoiling massive things in trailers. Good job, BBC. Fantastic. Wee, series 9. Series 1, even. Chris Rexon. Wee. Oh, dear. Um, so, yeah, let me know. Do you want Daleks? Do you want Sidemen in series 10? Not 11, 10. I think the Sidemen story could work. Maybe in the finale, bring it back. I don't know what you do with them, because, kind of... I feel like the Sidemen are slightly more limited than the Daleks, maybe, because, kind of, we've done everything they can do. But who knows? So, yeah, let me know your thoughts on that, because I'd be interested to know. I'm sure I could go with a bit of a meandering ramble for another 10 minutes but I won't I'll leave it there I mean I'm sure that I'll, I'll probably do a few more of these ran just kind of random videos giving some thoughts on stuff I mean let me know if you kind of like this slightly more unscripted just random thoughts on various topics it'll probably be a few more series 10 videos hopefully as we get closer to it and yeah let me know if you like that so don't post spoilers in the comments but you can post stuff related to things I've said just don't kind of post any blatant spoilers as I said earlier so that's pretty much it for this video I'm hoping class will happen soon and because I'm really looking forward to that I'm hoping that eventually they'll release a trailer as soon as they release a trailer I'll be breaking down the trailer discussing that and in the couple of weeks before class airs I'll do a kind of big preview video maybe 20 minutes half an hour looking ahead everything we know about the series so far without a load of spoilers but just a few kind of thoughts and how what I think is going to happen and then I will definitely review the first episode of class it may be delayed because I might have I'm not quite sure exactly when it'll be because I, well, I don't know when the show's airing. It's airing in October, isn't it? But I don't know when in October because I'm 
on sort of a holiday somewhere in October, so I might not be able to get it out as soon as the episode airs. But I will, at some point towards the end of October, have a review of Kloss episode one, and potentially the rest of the episodes as well, depends on how good it is really, and whether I can be bothered to record a sort of 15 minute review of every episode. Who knows? But let me know if that's something you'd like to see in the future. A bit more of that, or a bit less, I don't know. Do you like Kloss? Are you looking forward to it? So yeah, just let me know those various things. That's it for this video. Remember to like the video, subscribe if you're new here, follow me on Twitter at EMS underscore productions where you'll get all the latest on my videos on Doctor Who, on class, anything you like really. And that's pretty much this video. I will see you again. I need to stop saying that. I will see you again later this week, hopefully, for another video. Goodbye.